Not busy. What you see here is part of a uh, component for Indian education. This is a studio that we've made in one room at the administration building at the Sioux Area Public Schools. It's a combination studio facility with two sets in it, a control room for operating the studio, cameras, and work areas. There are four staff full-time employed at the Media Production Center for Indian Education. Linda Williams, John Thompson right behind her there. The set that you see there is the Magic Tree, and that's our preschool set. There's the control room that we operate the equipment from, and the artist's area is back there with Dennis LaJoyce. So this is uh, the television studio where the uh, component for the 4B takes place, which is a reinforcement of the preschool, the Indian education preschool. I'm Bill Davey, and I'm the producer director of the television Indian education programs in Sault Ste. Marie. And this is Joe Lumsden, tribal chairman of the Sault Ste. Marie tribe of Chippewa Indians. And it was through uh, his efforts and uh, the school system that these programs began. Maybe you could tell us how the, the origination of the 4B uh, programs began. Well, three years back when the, <coughs> the invent of the, of the Title IV, A, B, and C programs became available for Indian education, uh, the uh, board, uh, the education board, or the education committee of the Sault Ste. Marie tribe in conjunction with the uh, Sault Ste. Marie area schools uh, began to explore uh, a method by which we might be able to assist and bring up the academic level and uh, the cultural uh, knowledge areas of the Indian students in the system. And uh, it was decided that uh, in view of the fact that of an assessment that was made on the state by the state uh, in the school systems that the reading and mathematics levels of the Indian children in the one school, which was 60% uh, Indian uh, pupils, uh, was low. That was, these would be the two areas uh, in which we could begin to work in the academic area. And uh, we also decided that uh, there was a successful reading program which had been conducted uh, for three years already in the Sioux system, which used the uh, little letter people in the alpha reading program uh, very successfully, and the measurements and the testing uh, indicated that it was indeed successful for the students uh, generally in the system. So we decided that we would uh, bring the Alpha program into the preschool and see how it worked with the preschool children. And uh, the results of the first two years were pretty dramatic, as can be demonstrated on this chart. The area here, uh, the darkened area, is the achievement of the preschoolers, uh, three, and five, three to five-year-olds, compared to the kindergarten level in the Sioux area schools, uh, which are five, year, five and six-year-olds. Uh, the kindergarten children don't have the benefit of the Alpha program. It began in the grade one. So as you can see, the preschoolers were scoring significantly higher in word meaning, listening, uh, matching, alphabet, and in the numbers, and in copying, and everything related to the reading program. Now this was done in the first year. This was the testing, the first year result. This is the first year result, yeah. yes. And now we'll be going into the third year of that. Right. The uh, results of the testing of the last uh, year were, are not conclusive yet. Uh, we don't have them. But that was the result of the first year itself. Uh, in line with that, too, the parents were uh, very concerned that the cultural aspects be brought into the preschool program, which uh, 
was somewhat difficult because at the time there, was, there weren't any preschool materials available for the teaching of Indian children. Uh, the preschool concept was just beginning to get into the to Indian education. Uh, so in line with that, we had to develop some of our own aids. And here are some of them. This is, shows a, a legend and also a, a graphic a portrayal of a, of a legend. This is one of the things we use. We use puzzles, uh, many of the conventional uh, uh, things. Uh, we use corn uh, and things like this, the animals, which are certainly were a part of the life of the Indian people. Uh, birch bark wigwam. Birch bark canoe. wigwam, such as we see in the background. They make here. little miniature ones, though, in the classroom. We use a lot of visual aids, uh, such as. Uh, what we would see around here in the uh, studio. The uh, teaching, uh, we have uh, a staff in the classroom. We have between 30 to 35 pupils at any given time. We have one classroom teacher, uh, two homeschool visitors, and uh, sometime we have uh, a teaching teacher's aide. Uh, the homeschool visitors uh, visit in the home. They bring to the parents uh, the curriculum that is in being used in the classroom. Also, they uh, visit with the parents and seek to help them with any problems in, in the home environment that may be hindering the success of the school experience of their children. Also, they will uh, encourage the parent to work along and become interested uh, to the greatest extent uh, in the education of their children. And as we know, it's this is very important in any educational experience of, of any individual. So all in all, what we have then is a pretty well-rounded educational experience, including the reinforcement of the TV component here, which brings the program into the home twice each week, which can be viewed by the pupil along with the parent and the rest of the family, so they can see themselves on TV, also get reinforced as to what was being conducted in the classroom academically and uh, in general just uh, get a better image of themselves. Uh, at this time I'd like to turn it back over to Bill and Bill will probably explain a little more of the other two programs we have in Indian education. I might want to cover one thing that uh, Title IV B is an Indian education, a component of the Indian Education Act uh, which we're funded under. The need was established for Indian education in this area, and then uh, it was done, uh, the grant was uh, written to, to uh, the tribe. Yeah, it's a tribal contract. Uh, the contract for the Part B is to the tribe. Uh, the Part A program uh, contract is uh, to the Sioux Area Schools and the Indian uh, Parent Committee. <coughs> the uh, advisory committee on the Part uh, B pro uh, contract is the Education Committee in the Sioux Savory Tribe. But then the grant went to Washington, D.C., where uh, it had to compete against uh, hundreds of other grants every year. And uh, this, I think, is a pilot project in the use of videotape equipment to reinforce any kind of a school situation. So we've had an opportunity to have to develop everything on our own and no, uh, nothing to go by. Uh, the equipment was all sent, and then they said, well, just go ahead and see what you can do. So what we've done, and I'll explain a little bit about the television component of our program. First off, our map behind us shows where Sault Ste. Marie is. A lot of people are uh, pretty vague as to its uh, um, location. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan exists here, and we're at the very end over here, right next to Canada, Lake Superior here, Lake Huron, and Lake Michigan. This has traditionally been a center for Indians of this area, woodland Indians, Chippewa, the Sioux have been here, the Menominee, the Ottawa, the Potawatomi, the Iroquois. The Iroquois. <coughs> uh, today it's Chippewa, most entirely in this area. So to get back to the uh, television component of our program, its main function is to reinforce the classroom, uh, to be played back to the children 
Actually, there's three, three parts to the program. One is to reinforce what's going on in the classroom back to the children by means of, uh, oh, puppets. The set that you see here is just part of our program. The magic tree takes place in the tree that's back over here. Now, it's a hollow tree. And then the other part of the set that you saw at the beginning is the inside of that tree. And all these characters live in the tree. It's a magic tree in the forest, just outside of where these children live. And this is a Pukwijini, a wood elf of the forest. Pukwijini means a little person who lives in trees. It's a traditional Chippewa Indian character. And we took him out of uh, the folklore of the Chippewas of this area. And being a wood elf, he can uh, inherit the memory of his ancestors, so he becomes very valuable in teaching people about how the thing, how things were, uh, when the Indians lived here, many hundreds of years ago, and the traditions and the beliefs, and uh, the legends are one primary way that uh, all history was transmitted by the Indians. So he becomes a central character in the transmission of some of these legends. We do a lot of research to break down these legends, to put them on an elementary level for the students. There's, there's been quite a bit of uh, research done by various, various authors uh, on the subject of uh, Indian culture and heritage through their legends. So we research that out and break it down so that the kids can understand it and then present it in the studio using graphics that our artists uh, puts together and by making up little stories to go along using our puppets. The kids relate very well to these, and they know their names, they know their characteristics, and this is Roscoe the raccoon, who's a rascally little guy and always gets in trouble and has to be reprimanded by Cecil Skunk, or Bobcat, and then we have a, a big character, Barry the Bear, and one of us dresses up in that bear suit. We either come in the set as Barry the Bear, or uh, that's the character that goes out into the community and takes the letter people that were mentioned earlier. We go out to the stores, the various businesses, uh, visit the doctor or the dentist. With Mr. T, we took him to the dentist to give the kids an idea of what it was like to go to the dentist. Many of them have never been there. And we actually watched a filling being uh, put into a child's mouth. And uh, the whole episode, I think, left the kids with a feeling that it really isn't so bad to go to the dentist, and that was one reason why we did it. Well, we do this with all the letter people, because that's one of the components uh, within the preschool reinforcement, is presenting these letter people in a different way, in an entertaining way. Uh, the second part of our program is Indian culture and heritage, which we've touched on, in which we get into legends, get into uh, a segment called The Indians New, which contrasts the way the Indians did things traditionally, how we've learned from those things and how we use that information today. The other segment is called uh, the Woodland Way, or the Way of the Wild, rather. And that uh, we try to show the animals that live in this area and also the ecology of this area. We explain about uh, the herbs and the trees and uh, how they were used, how the Indians used those and how that they're, they exist there for us to use today. And we also uh, try and teach values through different skits, morals, and, and things like that, through the use of the puppets, confrontations with the various characters. The third part of our program, and one of the very important parts, is that we go into the preschool and we film what's going on that week. And then we edit that into our program, which is usually about a half an hour long each week, The Magic Tree. And then we play that back the following week to the children and to their parents and to the community at large. We're aiming it at their parents because those are the ones we want to affect to make them more interested in their children's education so that at home they get reinforcement. And this should uh, eventually uh, create a very good situation as far as education is concerned in the children's home because that, that was one of the areas of concern for the entire program. So the three areas are alpha. We teach, uh, reinforce the concepts in the classroom and the alphabet, the numbers, the words. Then uh, we go and teach the Indian culture and heritage, plus we show parts of the classroom to the home through the cable system each week. Now our programs are shown three times a week. 
over the cable, which can be transmitted directly from our studio here. Um, in the future, I think we're going to spend more time in the classroom because that's been one of our most well-received parts of the program. And we're going to try and stick very closely with the preschool curriculum to reinforce it more directly. And in that way, I think we can measure the results of television, which has been a problem, I think, in the, in the past, is to try to measure how good this kind of a component really is to a teaching situation. And we've got two other programs, which I'll mention, that are funded under a Part A grant of Title IV from, uh, on the federal level. And Part A covers the uh, elementary and the senior high, elementary or secondary education, here in Sault Ste. Marie. And so we have one program called the Woodland Way, which covers the elementary school. And that's pretty much basically what the magic tree is, only we leave out uh, the preschool kinds of uh, reinforcement, the alphabet and numbers and things like that. But we present the Indian culture and heritage more directly. And then uh, the senior high school level is different altogether. We bring in uh, personalities or uh, people working in Indian uh, activities throughout the nation We've had some people from Washington, and we have people on the state level come in, and we talk to them. Uh, these are parts of our programs, and they're presented to go along with the curriculums in both the junior high and the senior high studies programs. We also do, uh, we present Indian music and culture and heritage with slides, uh, records, traditional and modern. We tie these things in with uh, tapes that have been done, readings, uh, poetry, a lot of cultural things, and we try to make it entertaining as well as informative by doing it in segments. Uh, an entertaining segment, presenting uh, Indian history, and then backing that up with uh, an actual kind of a teaching tool uh, to explain that history to go along with the curriculum. And in both of these areas, we're trying to tie this in closely to the curriculum so that it can reinforce what's being taught there and it can be measured in those kinds of uh, results. The other thing is we hope through this kind of a program to uh, market it along with Indian Studies curriculums to be sent to other tribes, to other school districts that have uh, Indian education programs. We've had a lot of help through the community, resource people, Indian craftsmen. The set that is behind us here was donated by an Indian craftsman in our community. It's a, it's a Chippewa wigwam made out of birch bark. The only nails in it are used at the base to hold it, but it's put together all with string uh, and uh, pieces of wood to, uh, to represent the uh, traditional Chippewa home. I think that covers the television part of our program. Our, our future is uh, in the areas of hoping to uh, market this. Obviously, it isn't the kind of program that can be funded indefinitely. It is expensive, although it's done on a minimal scale as far as television is concerned. All the equipment that we have is uh, black and white. It's probably the cheapest TV studio you can put together for this kind of an operation activity, but it has been effective, and we are accumulating a lot of tape in our programs, and we hope that this can be shared. We've had a lot of requests nationally. We've gone to Indian education conventions nationally. We were asked to go to the American Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C., sponsored by the Smithsonian, to present our programs there, to uh, let people know nationally a little bit more about what's happening in Indian education in the media. Is there anything you'd like to add to? The only thing is, <clears throat> the one that's we have to do the work on right now is the one on the cultural heritage uh, segment, uh, where we can, whereby we can develop a packet that you mentioned, or some teaching aids and things that can be disseminated nationally. Uh, we feel this as being one of the functions and one of the objectives of this program, and uh, we have stressed this uh, to the. Office of Education, Indian Education in Washington, uh, and it was uh, the was the way we were pursuing the development as, as we are where we are today. I just hope that uh, we'll be able to continue 
uh, in this area because there's certainly in our travels we've noted that there's a definite need uh, for these types of materials. Uh, preschool programs, uh, Indian preschool programs are becoming very uh, evident all across the country as I find out as I travel about. It's a definite uh, area of education that uh, is getting a lot of attention by tribes, uh, reservation tribes and urban groups, and uh, of course preschool nationally, uh, even with non-Indian groups, is becoming uh, the thing. So uh, our concern will be definitely to see if we can develop uh, a practical uh, aids that will be uh, applicable to other Indian tribes and in their preschool programs. Uh, also, we, we're glad that we can service uh, the community. We are disseminating uh, Indian culture uh, to the community. We have a uh, community here of about 20% Indian population and the other 80% is non-Indian, so we are providing a uh, community uh, enlightenment of Indian values, uh, Indian culture making uh, the community aware, aware of Indian people, that we, uh, Indian people then can get some pride in themselves. And uh, this is why we have to be really concerned ourselves with doing this thing in, in good taste and uh, being factual. So there's a lot of ways uh, by which a program, by the use of video, uh, can affect not only your Indian people and our Indian people, but can affect just people in general. I think it's a reciprocating situation where they're learning while we're teaching uh, our children, and so they're learning consequently because of our efforts on the video. Uh, I found it to be uh, a, a teaching aid. Uh, like you say, we haven't measured it yet to, to see how really effective we are becoming, but I think the instrument now, we can do it. I'm sure it'll prove positively. Certainly our preschool program has been positive. We have no doubts about it. So all in all, I'm, I'm well satisfied with it. Uh, and the tribal members are satisfied with it. In fact, our, we might have over solicitation for, for our preschool program this year. So we'll have to expand that aspect of our program. I can, can't add anything anymore. I must invite people to contact us if we need Yeah, we can invite uh, contacts. We get them periodically, and it's a little difficult to make copies of our programs for national dissemination, but we hope to have that ability eventually. On a local level, we've had uh, open houses and uh, a lot of over 500 people last year just to, to come in to see what we're doing, because something like this it's imperative that the public relations go along with it. A lot of money is being put into it, and the uh, community needs to know what's being done and how the money is being spent. It is tax money, and this has been uh, something to contend with, I think, in all of these programs. We have to let them know how it's, what the function is and uh, really how we're spending the money and what we've got going here. I think one of the biggest things, too, that the Indian Education Program has created, it has created an interest by Indian parents uh, we're talking about a, a very active Part A a parent committee, which is composed of approximately 40 parents. And we're also talking, ag again, with a like number of uh, uh, 80 parents who are involved in our preschool program. So we're talking about 120 parents there. We're affecting a lot of, of uh, Indian parents who, be who before, I think, uh, didn't really become this involved in uh, education but we have got them involved in education. Uh, whereas uh, three years ago, we may have had uh, at the most six or seven high school graduates. Uh, last year, 1975, I'm speaking of, we had 42. So it's uh, definitely making an impact, I think. And we, we like to feel it's part of what we're doing. That's uh, creating some of these statistics that we can, are now getting. And I'm sure with all the interest being shown by Indian people all the way, I think everything combined is what's going to do the trick. So, uh, speaking on for the tribe, I, I can say that we're happy with it. And I, I just hope that we can continue to get the results we've been getting. <laughs>